Lennox Lewis or David Tua in the ring against the Mike Tyson, they would have knocked him out easily. Certainly, Al. Ma certainly, Al, that this is not the same Mike Tyson that used to, but is this the same Mike Tyson you think from the Savarese fight? I mean, this is more or less what we've come to expect from Tyson on the comeback trail, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's what we expect when he faces men that, uh, that are intimidated, and uh, both Lou Savarese was, and apparently Galata was as well, because uh, even after having a second round in which you know, he didn't fare that poorly, um, he just quit. And I think, you know, the, the wild card here is that this is, you know, the third time Andrew Galata has basically frozen in a fight at, at a strategic point. So it doesn't, it speaks poorly for him, of course, and it's not Tyson's fault that he froze. Tyson hit him with some decent punches. But when you look at Tyson, when Galata, even Galata in this fight, was able to take a step back, throw jabs, straight right hands, throw some very awkward uppercuts. He was able to hit Tyson just about any time he wants. Mike Tyson's defense now is abysmal, and that is going to be his undoing when he faces the winner of Lewis and Tua. No question about it, Al, but even then, when you talk technically, sure, he has plenty of technical problems. He's not hooking off the weave like he used to. He's throwing his jab lazily. There are lots of things, but don't you think it was just inevitable? Eventually, no matter how well Galata boxed, eventually Tyson's got to land something, and then you said three times. It really is four. The first two Bo fights, then Michael Grant, now now, now, this fight, eventually, as soon as the heat gets turned up, Galata quits, no? Yeah, well, that's the problem with Andrew Galata. Clearly, he's a guy that lacks intestinal fortitude. He's a man that has not learned how to deal with adversity in the ring. And he's also a man who has a great fear of success. And interestingly, in this fight, he weathered that first knockdown, had gotten through uh, the second round, claimed that he was butted by Tyson, and there may have been a clash of heads, was upset that referee Frank Garza did not uh, step in and intervene. But again, we saw an Andrew Galata who couldn't deal with adversity and an Andrew Galata who apparently was afraid of success because he was starting to get himself back into the rhythm of this fight against a less than menacing Tyson in the second round. So we saw all the frailties inside this head of Andrew Galata. Al, a lot of people are in disbelief that this is indeed Tyson's last fight. If he's not ready for a Tua, if he's not ready for a Lennox Lewis, where does he go from here? Well, I, I think he has no choice uh, but to fight the winner of Lewis and Tua. And there, by the way, there's no return clause, uh, return fight clause in the contract of Lewis and Tua. So whoever wins that fight will be free to go fight Mike Tyson. If Tua wins, uh, he has the same promoters as Tyson. They would love to make that fight. And Lewis people told me all day today, we're thrilled to make the fight if they can get the two TV networks, Showtime and HBO, to uh, find a way to mend fences and make this fight. There's nowhere else for him to go because he's going to be offered 25 or $30 million to take that fight. And it's time. If he's not ready now for those guys, he's not going to be ready at age 34. So Mike Tyson's in a box. If he decides to fight again, and we're getting indications he, in a couple weeks he's going to make some kind of decision, then I don't think there's any other choice but for him to go fight Lennox Lewis or uh, David Tua, because I don't think, as Max alluded to, the public is that interested in seeing Tyson continue this against opponents that clearly aren't ready to handle him. Yeah, yeah, Al, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Max, and it kind of follows up just on what you just said. Why should anyone in the United States or around the world care about Mike Tyson, whether he fights again or not? Why do we care? Why is it so important that we're covering this fight and, and making such a big deal about him? Well, you know, that, that's the $64,000 <laughs> question. I've been asking myself that question for about the last four or five years. I don't find him a compelling personality. Mm. Uh, he's bizarre, make no mistake about that. But I don't find him that compelling. I think, I guess the reason is because he is uh, a man who makes sudden endings to fights, especially when he's in against opponents that can't deal with his power. And he's, he's uh, an, some kind of boxing icon, even if it's a negative type. And boxing is a personality-driven sport now because nobody knows who's champion or how many weight divisions there are or how many governing bodies really sanction anything. And he is one of boxing's biggest personalities, whether it be for good or bad. So clearly people are interested. And the other reason they're interested is because we know that because of his marketability, Mike Tyson is always a heartbeat away from getting a world championship fight. Now is the time for that. So it's put up or shut up time. If he wants to eat Lennox Lewis's children, this is a time to begin <laughs> munching. And he does have two-fisted punching power. That's the last thing to go, Al. Of course, the right. hand speed isn't there anymore, which is what, one no. of the things that made him so spectacularly special. Uh, but let's talk about Holyfield for a second, because we know no matter what happens against Lewis, no matter what Holyfield does, the names Tyson and Holyfield, they're always going to be able to make money together. So you figure Tyson's good for at least the Lennox Lewis fight and then a Holyfield fight at some point, whether or not it's for the title, whether or not they're really beating world-class fighters at that time. 
Well, he's, if he's going to fight Holyfield, it will have to be prior to him fighting the Lewis Tool winner. Because by the time he gets done fighting either the Lewis, uh, either Lennox Lewis or David Tool, the public's not going to care to see him and Evander Holyfield in the ring again. And that would be, in my opinion, a fascinating act by Mike Tyson if he were to go try and fight Holyfield first. In my opinion, that would be an admission by him that he doesn't think he can handle either Tour or Lewis. Well, Holyfield has his number, Al, but what about Ike Bay? All right, I'm not supposed to talk about Ike Bay Abuchi <laughs> right now. Al, Al, Ike Bay Abuchi, all oh, this would be a moot point. What's going on? Okay, all right, Jay, take the, question. <laughs> take the next question. Al, all we talk about sometimes for boxing is the sport and the sanctity of the sport and how much it gets embarrassed over and over. Luckily, there was no mayhem in Motown this time around. No yes. one bit anybody, no one hit anyone below the belt. From that standpoint, does boxing try to say, hey, this wasn't as bad as it could have been, and, and you know, can it kind of pat itself on the back after a night like this? I don't know about patting itself on the back, because clearly Andrew Galata didn't show a warrior spirit. Mike Tyson wasn't a great fighter, but maybe our expectations of this evening were so low that the fact that there wasn't a riot, the fact that uh, nobody got disqualified, uh, and the fact that there wasn't mayhem is good enough. And to me, it's good enough, because we have good things to look ahead to in the future of boxing, and the near future, the Tua Lewis fight, which I think is wonderful, the Vargas Trinidad fight, which you guys alluded to. Those are coming up. Those are, I think, excellent showcases of four excellent fighters. So as a result of that, this is, you know, we always, every time there's something boxing, we say, oh, the sport, you know, can the sport handle it? Can it not handle it? Well, you know, each of these situations have to be taken uh, each as a separate item. You can't link them all together. Uh, and this is a separate night from all those other nights. But yes, it could have been worse tonight. Yeah, Al, and you know what? You, you just alluded to it yourself. Boxing's had a banner year in 2000 after an abysmal 98 and 99. Do you think that the fans are now getting hipper than the media? I mean, I'm very curious to see what the pay-per-view does in this Tyson fight and compare it to, let's say, Vargas and Trinidad, which is not going to generate the same kind of mainstream media coverage, but is one that hardcore boxing fans are salivating for. Well, I think this fight will, will end up doing pretty well in numbers for pay-per-view. A lot of people were interested in this for a variety of reasons, whether they wanted to see a train wreck or they just were intrigued by the matchup of these two men. So I think it'll do pretty well in numbers. How well the Vargas Trinidad fight does and how well Tua Lewis does will depend, in fact, on how educated not only hardcore boxing fans are, but also casual boxing fans, and very much how well we all cover those matches, and those are matches that deserve, I think, uh, the proper kind of attention. All righty, Al and Max, thanks very much. We certainly appreciate uh, both your time. And, Pleasure uh, having me today. <laughs> and Al will be back a little bit later on in the program. Again, if you're just tuning in, here's the result. Mike Tyson defeats Andrew Galata. It's a third-round TKO. Mike Tyson now 49-3 and three overall with 43 wins by knockout, and you see there on the graphic... 37 and 0 in non-title bouts. Of course, this is a non-title bout. It was scheduled to go 10 rounds. It only lasted just beyond the second round. And you want to keep it locked here on ESPN News because in a little while, we will head back out to Michigan for the post-fight news conferences. Mike Tyson and Andrew Galata, we are anxiously awaiting to hear from both of those fighters. You want to keep it right here on ESPN News. I am here with Tommy Brooks, Tom, the trainer of Mike Tyson. And Tommy... Mike Tyson was able to get it done with the big overhand right in round one that knocked Andrew Galata down, and then Galata quit after the second round. Were you surprised that he quit? Uh, yes, I was surprised, and no, I wasn't surprised. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I was surprised that uh, I thought that he would give it a, a better shot than what he did. Uh, uh, anything could happen in a fight. Uh, Mike is a tremendous puncher, as everybody knows, you know, and uh, Andrew just, uh, I guess he thought that it, there was a no-win situation for him. Uh, he tried to say something about a headbutt or something, you know. But uh, from one, the replay that I saw, it was clearly a right hand right on the chin. Do you think that cut came from the overhand right that he, or one of the overhand rights that uh, Tyson landed? Oh, well, Mike landed a, a number of right hands and a number of hooks also. So, I mean, it could have been any one of those shots. Were you a little surprised, as I was, that Andrew Galata had a game plan that basically involved him throwing a lot of left hooks against Tyson, which is a really a recipe for disaster against Tyson, who is a left hook artist. Well, you know, uh, you know, I, I, the guy's in there trying to make a living for his family. You know, I, I, that's the best I can say, you know. <laughs> you're, you're a diplomat, aren't you? <laughs> you, know, I'm, I, you know, the guy, you know, but on a serious side, though, I, I think that uh, uh, he needs to get some help uh, psychologically uh, to overcome this, this uh, 
fear or whatever it is that he has. Is it a fear of success with Andrew Galata, do you think? I know he's not your fighter, but, it, I mean, as you observe him. I think it's a combination of things because the guy has all the talent in the world, Al, and um, I've seen him in some fights, uh, uh, like with a couple of fights with both. You know, yeah. he, he was way ahead on points. The fight with Grant, he was ahead, you know. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I said initially that he's a front runner, and he's proven it to be that way, you know. Uh, what I mean by a front runner is this, as long as he's out ahead on points, you know, he'll stay with the fight. But uh, when it starts going going south on him, he'll just fold his tents. Let's talk a little bit about your fighter, Mike Tyson. It wasn't a, a brilliant performance, but he got done what he needed to get done. Uh, wh what would you? How would you grade him? Well, I, I'd get Mike a, a B on it. Uh, we had been camped too long. Uh, our first fight, well, the fight. Was scheduled to fight. We were scheduled to fight on September the 9th, I think it was, and then they pushed the fight back to this one. And uh, uh, we've been training. We've been in the camp since July, the end of July. So uh, Mike is just tired. You know, he's tired of hearing me. He's tired of looking at me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, you can only train for so long. You know, before you get bored with it. Mm. But uh, could he have been a little overtrained? I wouldn't say no. overtrained. I, I I'd say uh, just tired and bored with it you know yeah. and uh, but he, I you know I, I gave him uh, like I said a B mm -hmm. B plus you know what well, uh, obviously you were surprised as we all were when he suggested that maybe he wasn't gonna fight again after this what is next for him and will he fight again I have no idea I haven't spoke to Mike about it uh, uh, I, I would imagine that he'll tell Shelly and uh, we'll get lined up on a date and then I'll go to work on an opponent you think he will fight again I'm hoping so. Like okay. I said, you know, as I told you yesterday, you know, I signed on to win the title, and uh, this isn't the title, so I think we got another couple of fights coming. All right, Tommy, congratulations on the win this evening. Thank you, brother. Tommy Brooks, one of the classiest guys and best trainers in boxing. Let's go back to the studio. Gentlemen, thank you. Those will be the best answers you get from about Mike Tyson's future. They have just announced that neither Tyson nor Galata will answer questions from the press tonight. The only people you'll hear from Shelly Finkel and Tommy Brooks. Interesting things going on here in Detroit as again, there is so much talk about Mike Tyson and his possible future. And right now, we won't hear from Mike Tyson. That's it for now from Detroit. We'll send it now back to the studio. Thank you, Scott. That's interesting. Tyson, Galata, neither one will say anything. They won't be at the news conference. We'll hear from their trainers as soon as they step up to the podium. Post-fight news conferences right here on ESPN News. We'll bring it to you as soon as it becomes available. For those just tuning in, Mike Tyson defeats Andrew Galata in Detroit. A third-round TKO. Tyson knocked Galata down in the first round. Galata did not come out for the third round, but because he completed the second round, it goes down as a third-round TKO. Now, we won't hear Galata at the news conference, but we will hear from Andrew Galata, who's standing by with Al Bernstein. I am here with Andrew Galata, and Andrew, I, I know everyone's wondering why uh, you decided not to fight after the third round, or after the second round. Why so? I got a problem in my eye, you know. I got a cut over my eye. I felt it, not, not dizziness, and I couldn't fight. This was what it is. Uh, some had said that you thought you were butted uh, in that eye. Is, is that what you believe happened? I didn't thought. I know that I, I was twice. I mean, actually, was twice or three times. You know, I, I went ahead, ahead about it. And a referee did not respond to it, you know, pretty much well. He didn't even war, uh, 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 warn him, which was uh, unbelievable. You know? Everybody says I'm, uh, I'm the dirty fighter you know, in, uh, in, this, in, in, in this creation. You know? I don't know what happened. You were down in the first round. I, I have to say one thing about your strategy that was surprising to me. Instead of using your jab and your straight right hand, which are your best weapons, you really were throwing a lot of left hooks with him, which, which part of what opened you up to the overhand right. And I, I'm surprised that was kind of your game plan. Or was that just something that ended up happening? He was open for left, for left hook, you know. I was a little bit late with the right, but he was open for that. How disappointing is this for you? And I, I don't know, how do you feel about the disappointment your fans and uh, other people may feel? What I can say, I, I, I just want to say sorry for, for, all my, for all my friends, you know, who count on me. And what can I do? I give, I, I, I have to give my no self, you know, heavy, heavy thought about bo uh, uh, boxing forward, you know. Are you thinking, you're thinking about not fighting again? Maybe, I don't know. All right. Andrew, good luck next time, if there is a next time. Andrew Galata.
We'll send it back to the studio. Thank you, Al. After the fight on Saturday night, make that Friday night, Tyson now is a perfect 37-0 all-time in non-title bouts with 33 knockouts, including 18 of the first-round variety. These fights have lasted an average of exactly three rounds. When a belt is on the line, Tyson is 12-3 with 10 KOs. Um, and he was, did it in fairly emphatic fashion. Were you happy with his performance? I was very happy. Uh, the things that I was looking for was a little different than most other people. When they were breaking, I saw he had total control. The ref even came back after, thanked him. Galato was excessively holding. He didn't try to pull. He just said, ref, okay, break. Went back to the corner. When he dropped him, he went to the neutral corner. He had it under control. Um, I felt another round and he would start, instead of throwing the overhand rights, would start picking it up from underneath and it would have been over. And I think Galata realized that. Uh, Galata did complain about uh, headbutts. Um, did you see anything that you thought were uh, intentional? Well, first of all, being myself, I didn't see any, of course. And, but, Objectively speaking, right. but that's okay. Your, your but, opinion counts. No doubt that first right hand broke the, uh, right. there, nothing to do with getting in close. And I think Galata was just taking too much punishment. Mm -hmm. I, his, he was fighting, um, what's his name, um, Al Cerdo. You, <laughs> you know, he put up more fight with Cerdo to not fight than to fight Mike. <laughs> That's probably true. Now, obviously, uh, you, Mike surprised all of us this week by suggesting that this might be his last, his last fight. And uh, uh, you may have been a little surprised by it, but not that much. What do you think will be the case here now? Um, I think he's sticking to that at this point. Um, we'll see how he feels a week or two away from it. Um, he has a love-hate with um, boxing. He loves it. He loves the media attention. He hates a lot of the things that are written about him. And at some points, um, it was just became too much. And I think that he needs just a little breathing room, which he wasn't getting in Detroit. Can I ask you, is there any way... No, you can't. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I won't. Go ahead. Is there any way that, as a group, uh, and you are very media savvy. You're very savvy about just about everything that goes on a bike. Is there any way to get him to function in this environment a little bit easier, given the fact that it's not all he's doing? Is there any way to get him to function in this environment so it can be a little more enjoyable for him so that uh, he might find a way to get in the ring and apply his craft? Well, you're, what I'm saying is not applying to you. But there are certain people who, because of the history with Mike, don't give an inch, even when Mike tries. And I, at the beginning, said, Mike, look, try this, try that. And then he would come back and say, see the shit, Shell? He says, I try it, I try it, and this. And in his mind, he was trying. But there's certain things that you carry baggage. You carry baggage from the past. Um, I think there's some opportunity that if he wants to come back and he's enjoying it, and I think when he reviews the tape, he'll see... Look, I did this wrong, but boy, look what I did here. Look what I did there. Mm -hmm. I was able to slip punches. I was throwing um, a little bit wide to right, but I was getting closer. And I think he'll be happy. If he does come back, um, we would have to assume he wants to fight the winner of Lewis Tua next. Um, I would assume so. Um, he might want to fight um, Holofield and the winner of Lewis um, and Tua. Um, I don't think he's intimidated by any of them. And I believe that the Tyson that came in today would have beat the whole of field that beat him. The thing is, he trained for this, which he wasn't training then, but um, we'll see. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Shelley Finkel, the boxing advisor of uh, Mike Tyson. We have to throw things back to the studio right now. Artie Al, thanks very much, good job. Tyson says this is his last fight. We'll have to wait and see if Tyson ever steps inside the ring again. Here are some other past heavyweight boxing greats and what they did in their last fights. You notice Muhammad Ali lost to Trevor Burbeck. Ironically, Tyson beat Burbeck for his first heavyweight title in 1986. And we have just learned that Andrew Galata will be attending the post-fight news conference. So as soon as he gets up to the podium, we will send it back to the Palace of Auburn Hills. Got a headbutt. Uh, re a, re a, re a referee didn't re uh, uh, respond pretty, pretty much well as, as he's uh, supposed to. He but you're a warrior, him. Andrew. You're he didn't a fighter. him. But you're a, you're a fighter that the crowd pays. Got business in, the, in, the, in, the, in my head, that's it. You, but what made you dizzy? Was it that first it's knockdown? The, knockdown. What, what about the knockdown? Did you did you really recover from that knockdown at the end of the first round? Actually, I was just slip. You know, I I I, I hasn't been you know, hit very well. You know, just, I just I was slip, was slip on the down and then that's it. I I I, I stood up. <clears throat> 
What do you say to the people who are driving home now, the people who spent the $49.95 for the pay-per-view, the people who were rooting for you, your fans and boxing fans all over the world, at this great and grave disappointment to the sport? Listen, boxing is a very, very difficult sport, you know. And I'm sorry for, for, for all, 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 all my fans, you know, who, who count on me, you know. I just didn't know they have my day, day to day. Andrew, do you want to fight again? Do you want to continue with the sport you've been in since a, a very young man, since a young teenager? I have to very, I mean, you know, give myself very, very heavy, heavy thought, you know, about it. So I don't know. I have a, a, a reputation as a dear fighter, you know, and, and, and this for a particular reason, you know, somebody had you know, about he, 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 he me, you know, and just, you know, and no, and no, no, nobody took, uh, took care of this, you know. He didn't have, have a, he didn't even have hard warning, you know. All right, a very distraught and upset Andrew Galata, as are most people. Well, that's what one Mike Tyson punch will do to you. That's very scary. After Friday's fight, Tyson now a perfect 37-0 all-time in non-title bouts with 33 knockouts, including 18 of the first round variety. We're going to send you out right now to the Palace of Auburn Hills. Tyson's trainer, Tommy Brooks, at the I think mic. Mike has the potential to be the champion again. Um, that's why I signed on. I signed on to, to, to train the champion of the world, the undisputed champion of the world. He has all the potential to do so, but if he doesn't want to fight, I mean, that's on Mike. You know? uh, I'm behind him 100%. Yeah, but. Right. Yeah, but if. Wait, yeah. wait. Well, that's good, Mike. Right. There's, first of all, everything is in a time frame. If Mike decides to take and not fight and come back in five years, it can't be Louis or Tua. But um, everything being equal, it's the winner of that or Holofield, then the winner of that. Hey, uh, this is for Gary. Uh, where does this put Andrew now? I mean, is he going to, can he even be marketable after this fight, after what he did tonight? And Andrew's got to, uh, he told me in the dressing room, he wants to rethink his career himself. He doesn't know if he wants to go forward. <laughs> um, it's a very disappointing performance. He quit. Um, he said he was dizzy. And that's the reason that he was, he couldn't continue. He told that to uh, the doctor, he told that to Alan I. But as far as going forward, I think now certainly isn't the time. It's premature. Um, he's got he's to rethink whether he want, wants to be a fighter or not. And I think that's the major question. Yes, Shelley, do you think a fight Tyson were, uh, against Goloda, uh, sorry, against Klitschko is possible in Europe? Um, it doesn't make any sense for us. Um, Klitschko is only big in Europe, and the US TV, US TV is the main source of revenue. It just doesn't generate here. He's um, just not big here. Well, I'll cross that bridge when I have to. Right now, Mike's not fighting, so I'm not even thinking about that. And before the Klitschko, I have two other options I'll be pursuing. I just told you. <laughs> Can I ask both Shelley and Tommy, do you honestly believe in your heart of hearts? I'm sorry? Sorry, here, Shelley. Oh, oh, hi. Do, do you believe in your heart of hearts that Mike will not fight again? Will you try to actively talk to him about his future and find out where he's going? Do you actually believe well, he won't fight again? The first thing is to give Mike some breathing room, which I will. And then, within the next week or so, him and I will reach out for each other. That always happens. And at that point, I'll see if um, what he feels today is how he still feels. And if he still feels that, then we'll discuss what else he wants to do. Um, people change careers. If he decides to fight Shelley after November 11th, Lennox Lewis, is more than willing to make the fight. Is HBO? I don't know. We'll sit down and we'll try to <laughs> work it out. Okay. Well, Tua uh, definitely is on board for everything. Not after November 11. Uh, Al? You, you saw Al? Yeah. 
Al, you, you sound extremely disillusioned. What, what is that about? Why, why are you so disillusioned with the whole fighting game? Well, because I think the, the fighters today are half of fags. They get too much money. Listen, I, I'm going to give you a quick example. A quick example. Two fighters come into a gym, and they're both broke. And they're boxing each other, and one guy gets a, hit with a good punch, and he, he goes back to the corner and he says, I'll get him this round out, the son of a B, you know. Same fighter, same two fighters. One has a half a million dollars in his kick. He's got his girlfriend waiting, waiting downstairs in his car, and he gets hit with the same punch. You know what he thinks? Wow, I'll probably have a scar on my face. Wow, Jesus, uh, you know, I wonder. He ain't thinking about getting back to this here guy. They're not hungry no more. Everybody's got too much money in their pockets. You got to be hungry in this business. Nah, give the money to charity if they want to give it. Give it to the poor people. Shelly, how many times before has Mike ever said to you or to anyone that that was it, that he was done? Is this, uh, I know after the Orland Norris fight, he said he was done. Uh, is this something he does all the well, time? No. And, you know, he said after the Orland Norris, I don't think I want this anymore. Yesterday he was pretty emphatic. And he doesn't do this um, often, but let me just ex say something. There's very few people in this room who are on the other side of some writings or other things that really can hurt someone. So it's very hard for someone to understand, and I'm not saying whether he's at fault or not, I'm just saying, put that aside. The pressure and the good that come with being Mike Tyson is overwhelming, and the bad hurts more than you can imagine. And at points, I think he just says to himself, hey, this is too much. And... Shelley. Yes, sir. You never box in your life. You're wrong. So don't try to... Whether you're, you're a four-round fighter or you're fighting for the world title, you got the same feeling, you understand? Every, every four-round kid out there thinks he can beat the world champion. Otherwise, he won't be in the business. Al, we're not talking about the same thing. Well, what are you talking the about? The press. The press oh. I was talking I'll about. I'll help you, Shelley. Well, the press hasn't fought either. Right. Okay, right. go ahead. Yeah, you go guys ahead, Shelley. think. No, you that, that's it. I just Don't got a report cats. that Andrew did go. Which hospital, Jay, was it? The uh, Pontiac? Uh, Pontiac Oakland Hospital. Pontiac Oakland Hospital. Uh, yeah, can I say something? You know, I, it seems like I'm hard on my fighter, but yeah, I'm so disappointed in the sense that I know He'll vouch for me, Lou Duvin down there. The guy's got the ability. He's got so much talent out there that isn't funny. I know he could do it. I know he could beat at just about anybody. You know, and so it's hard. It's kind of hard for me to swallow. What's it? What do you think Tommy's feeling right now? Well, first of all, I have no idea what Tommy's feeling. I, you know, Rich. Um, I think I had some feeling about it. I didn't expect it yesterday, um, but, you know, it wasn't like, whoa. Um, I was surprised he told Al Bernstein first, and that was what happened. Real quickly, let me just tell you about the, uh, the replay that'll be shown on, on Showtime on uh, it'll actually be two nights back to back, Friday, October 27th at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, and Saturday, uh, October 28th, 11.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time. Any other questions for uh, anybody up here? All right, thank you again for coming out. See you next time. <laughs>